Hey y'all, I'm Tavern No Spaces and I'm a software engineer. And in case you hadn't guessed it, I prefer tabs to spaces, but that's a subject for another video. This video is for you if you're interested in one day being a, a software engineering leader, or you're at that crossroads of trying to decide to be an engineering manager or so staff software engineer. So stick around to find more about each of these paths. In this video, we're gonna talk about the engineer career fork, what's a staff engineer, what's an engineering manager, a day in the life of both of them, and the engineering pendulum. First off, I wanna give a disclaimer. There's actually no one right answer for everyone. However, I hope to give you the tools to figure out which one is best for you, or at least helping you explore the two different options. And trust me, there's no one best answer, only one that's right for you. Before we get into the specific two paths, maybe we can take a step back and look at this framing. Most likely as a software engineer, you've worked five plus years up until this point, where you reach this fork in the career ladder. And as you can see, the two paths are represented with one side being individual contributors and the other side being engineering managers. Individual contributor is the side of the path that staff engineers fall into. So what's the difference between being a senior engineer and a staff engineer? And honestly, sounds like a manager would be way cooler, right? We get most likely better compensation, better perks, more responsibility. So why would you wanna continue down the staff engineer route? Well, actually this isn't true. Staff engineers have parallel career track with engineering managers. Typically they're making the same compensation, the same amount of responsibility, and the same amount of influence within a company. So what is the difference between a staff engineer and an engineering manager? Well, we'll start with a staff engineer. In this case, staff engineers, and they're not staffs like wizard staffs, although staff engineers very much are like wizards. Staff engineers operate as technical leaders within the organization. So that means they're mentoring other engineers and they have a very specific and in-depth knowledge of a system or part of a system that many engineers are working with across an org. Typically, they fall into several different roles. Some of them include a tech lead, an architect, a problem solver, and a few others. Oftentimes, staff engineers are called in to work on really gnarly problems, things that are require a lot of resourcing and extra time, but have huge implications for the rest of the code base and the other engineers working on it. In terms of how they spend their time, staff engineers are typically spending a lot more time doing code reviews than they are coding as compared to a senior engineer or junior engineer. If you're interested in code reviews, writing technical specifications for a product, guiding fellow engineers in code best practices, fixing really thorny problems, then staff engineer might be the right role for you. So how about an engineering manager? Well, despite how the tracks appear, engineering managers are often a parallel move and more in line with what a senior engineer does at a company. So typically what's in line with a staff engineer would be a director or a senior engineering manager. Engineering managers are often regarded as typical people managers, but with a more technical slant. Some of their responsibilities include fostering the careers of the people on their team, managing team morale, hiring additional people, evaluating outside vendors for budget and feasibility, and also negotiating timelines with other cross-functional stakeholders, such as the product manager and upper management. And they may spend 10% or even less of their time on coding. So if you're interested in growing and supporting others in their career, Career, managing cross-functional stakeholders and their expectations, working on people problems more than code, creating a happy work culture, then engineering management might be right for you. So now that we've run through a breakdown of some of the qualitative differences between being an engineering manager and a staff engineer, maybe we can dive a little deeper in what that looks like day by day. So one way we can look at how these two different roles spend their time is taking a look at their calendar. First off, let's start with the senior software engineer as a baseline so we can get a look at what that looks like. By the way, I got some of these from a book by Will Larson, which goes into more depth about engineering management and staff engineering in particular. So feel free to check those out in my links below. And I am not unfortunately sponsored by it, but oh. maybe one day. Going back to our engineer, 
Our engineer typically spends 80% of their time coding, or ideally they would, but the rest of it is spent in meetings with other, with their product manager, sprint planning, and uh, their engineering manager. Now, when we take a look at a staff engineer, Typically they're spending 40% of their time coding, maybe another 40% doing code reviews, and the rest of their 20% of their time with different directors, other staff engineers, and trying to push forward initiatives more broadly. Finally, let's look at an engineering manager's calendar. 80% of their time they'll be spending in meetings that are working across the org. And additionally, they'll also spend 10%, if that, coding. And the final 10% is really just working on initiatives that they have upcoming and getting things done like emails and the like. One final note I'd say on this is from a pretty famous blog post by Sarah May and hey sorry to interrupt uh, this is Taver. I was actually looking I'm editing the video and looking at a, the blog post and it was actually written by Charity Majors and there's a tweet storm by Sarah May so I get the two confused in this, but um, Charity, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Um, I've linked both of your your blog posts as well as Sarah May's tweet storm in the about section. So everyone check it out. This blog post talks about the engineering pendulum. So Sarah reframes the question where often the two tracks are presented as solid tracks. Once you decide on one, you're stuck in that path for the rest of your life. In her post, she encourages engineers to switch back and forth between the two, not only to keep their technical skills sharp, but also to improve their people skills. And going back and forth creates empathy for the other's position when you're working with the other. I hope this sheds a little bit more light on the options you have with your career path. And basically what we've come to is you don't have to do either of them, but you can also do both. Most important thing to honor is what you're looking for at the time. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you can be the first to know whenever I post new videos on software engineering and tech. Also be sure to check out some links I have in the about section. I referenced some helpful books and articles that can help you dig further into this search. Now I wanna turn it over to you. What are some of your career goals? What is the best path for you? Leave a comment below, let me know. See you all in the next video.